Khan. Israel wants peace, and they're a great warring nation if they have to be. You see that. They have the best equipment, they have the best of everything, but they don't want this. After all of these years, even Bibi gets tired of war. <laughs> we have a strong free economy because we have a strong military, because we have a strong relationship with the President of the United States and the American people. Well, better times in America. You know, there's never been a stronger ally to Israel as president than President Trump, and there has not been a bigger achievement towards peace in the Middle East than Donald Trump's Abraham Accords. And you see 45 there with humility and humor with the former and incoming Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And we compare that with the literal version of Sleepy Joe, where the White House had to officially deny that President Biden was not falling asleep talking to Israel's prime minister. I mean, whether it's bending over backwards to Iran and their nuclear ambitions or the administration's desire to give in to the wants of the equally Israeli-hating Palestinian Authority may have gone from the most pro-Israeli president to the least. Joining me now is Guy Miliere, a senior fellow at the Gatestone Institute, who recently wrote an in-depth chronology of the Biden administration's hostility to Israel going back to Biden's inauguration. Guy, welcome to the program. You know, on top of the Abraham Accords, President Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. He moved the embassy there. But the Biden administration, they, they want to reopen a consulate for Palestine in Jerusalem. Talk to us about, you know, just how bad has Biden been for Israel? Uh, the hostility of Biden towards Israel is very old. Uh, if you remember what did happen in 1982, you have to remember that uh, he spoke very badly to Menahem Begin, who was uh, the prime minister of Israel at that time. And uh, Menahem Begin uh, gave an answer that was very harsh, but uh, very justified. And uh, he said, I'm not a Jew with trembling knees. And during the Obama administration, I could say that you had many incidents uh, between Israel and Joe Biden. So it didn't start when he became president. And during the first days of his presidency, he took very, very bad decisions. For example, he decided to reestablish relations with the Palestinian Authority without asking Mahmoud Abbas to stop financing and inciting terrorism. And uh, he gave money again to the Palestinian Authority. And uh, so when you don't ask an organization that is ready to push people to kill Jews, uh, when you give to, to this organization money, and when you establish uh, relations again with this organization, it's very bad decisions. At the same time, he decided uh, to uh, try to uh, pass a new agreement with uh, the Mullah regime in Iran. And uh, he did ask the Mullah regime to stop saying that they want to destroy Israel. And uh, so sometimes, uh, very often, Biden said that he loves Israel, that he's a friend of Israel. But when you're a real friend of Israel, you don't do that. You don't do he that. And uh, I could add many, many other things. Uh, every month, almost every month, uh, you have someone in the Biden administration who says something very bad about Israel. And uh, one of the worst decisions uh, taken by the Biden administration concerning Israel was not only what I said, uh, the reestablishment of relations with the Palestinian Authority and the, the, the decision to, to negotiate again with uh, Iran. Uh, I think that one of the worst decisions was to uh, choose someone who is very anti-Israeli to negotiate between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. Uh, the man is called Hadi Amr, and Hadi Amr is uh, someone who wrote a few years ago, I was very inspired by the Palestinian Intifada. Okay. I don't think that many Israeli are inspired by the Palestinian Intifada. Guy, we really appreciate your insight this evening. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there. But Guy Miliere, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. When well, a shocking development, Father Frank Pavone,